are. I mean, the moment you've been waiting yeah. for, get out your phones if you're here, but buckle up, thrill of the lifetime, the United States Air Force Thunderbirds about ready to start their ground show. You start to see it there. Uh, at some point here, we're going to turn it over to the Air Force Thunderbirds narrator, but Debbie, this is really the headlining act, if you will, and, you know, the Thunderbirds bring a lot to this show. Yeah, that's right. The precision demonstration of the F-16 Fighting Falcon and sharply choreographed ground ceremony will showcase the pride and professionalism of America's airmen. Yeah, as the Thunderbirds, they're going to cut through the skies. They're going to be doing all kinds of cool stuff. Colonel Anderley, the commander of the 388th, he told us, hey, that's my favorite airplane, just the maneuverability. Right. We're going to see all of that. Uh, they're going to be wingtip to wingtip for a large portion of the show. Yeah, two solo pilots have the privilege of showcasing the maximum capabilities of the F-16 with their very own precision routine. That is cool. Yeah, so they fly in a four-ship and then a two-ship, and then they go uh, at some points uh, together, all six. And so really they're the Air Force's ambassadors in blue, a huge recruiting tool uh, for the Air Force. Show after show, year after year, they are one of the Air Force's premier recruiting tools, and no doubt we know why. They're also world-renowned Goodwill ambassadors. Yeah, I mean, just 75 years of history for the Air Force and, you know, the nation, the Air Force Thunderbirds. Hey, this is going to be a lot of fun to watch. I, I got to ask, Debbie, have you ever seen the Thunderbirds live? I have seen the Thunderbirds live, yes, oh. growing up in Utah. Now, uh, I, I was just looking up a few facts, like, do the Thunderbirds fight in combat? And this says the squadron's F-16s are only slightly modified for air demos and can be made combat ready within 72 hours. According to the Air Force, the Thunderbirds F-16 still have all the capabilities of any other combat ready fighter. Yeah, so the Thunderbirds based out of Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada, part of the 57th Fighter Wing. And, you know, any of these pilots could be called up uh, depending on our, our nation's needs. But here they are out here recruiting the next generation of airmen and guardians as you get a look at the crowd trying to get in. So you got some big old camera yeah, lenses out right, there, right? they sure do. <laughs> now, wh what I thought was really profound that we were hearing is um, Beowulf, who is the uh, pilot of the F-35 that we've been seeing out here today, she is not just a show pilot. She is an excellent, skilled, uh, ready trained for air combat if needed. She's, uh, we were told that she could be deployed at any given time. This is, is kind of just when she gets to show off and show what the plane is capable of, but I thought that was really important to mention that. Yeah, all these airmen and pilots with the Thunderbirds uh, selected, yeah, really best of the best uh, in the Air Force and a true honor to represent as the ambassadors in blue, uh, you know, and perform this mission. But they could seamlessly rotate back in uh, and, and do the Air Force's mission to fly, fight, and win. So, uh, pretty cool stuff here and, and can't wait to see this demonstration that should be around a 35 minutes actual air routine we talked with lieutenant colonel ryan yingling the operations officer thunderbird number seven this morning when matt was here and uh you know he you could just sense you know how honored all of these pilots are uh, to not only fly, you know, for the Thunderbirds, but just in general for the Air Force. Yeah, no, it is very cool. What an honor that they have gotten to this point in their career. And what an amazing moment when they get to go and do this show, which is always a crowd pleaser, always has to be perfectly uh, precise as they get out. And, and still in a plane that we were told uh, you know, could head over to combat at any time. Yeah, so these are the F-16s with the Block 52 engine, as Colonel Anderley told us, the big engine. Uh, right. So, uh, you know, capable of breaking the sound barrier, so excited to see that. And, and we're going to see a lot of aerobatics that uh, there's only a Debbie, and that's really what's so unique about this. There's only a, I mean, a, a, a fraction of people in the in really the world who could pull off the stunts that the mm -hmm. Air Force Thunderbirds uh, are able to do. Right, highlight of this show for sure, as we get to watch them and their half an hour uh, 
should we, do we call it aerobatics? What, what do we call it as they head out there? Yeah, I mean, it's one way. It's, I mean, it seems diluted. There's aerobatics. <laughs> I mean, they're showing the F-16's capability. They're mm -hmm. demonstrating American air power uh, and resolve. Uh, I mean, just so many different things. And uh, you know, not to be understated, uh, but we've talked about it quite a bit today. But just recruiting the next generation of airmen and guardians. Yeah, because I got to say, if I was joining the Air Force, I probably wouldn't want to fly an F-35 or be part of the Thunderbirds. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's probably what everyone wants, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, how can you not come to the air show and be, you know, inspired to serve, uh, you know, after you watch this show? Right. Right. So they're getting ready. And, and really, even look as they're walking, as each person walks, it is all so perfectly choreographed. And this happens long before they get in the air. Even the pomp and circumstance of them getting in position and, and having uh, the, the routine and the schedule that they have as they help each other into the planes, as they get ready, as they stand at alert right there on the tarmac. Yeah, so, it, you know, this is kind of the culmination, this in part, the actual show, right? They actually train all off season so like over the winter months uh and they actually go uh, a lot of people don't know this they actually go spend a week or two with the navy's blue angels team and mm. they they train together and learn from each other and, to help tweak their shows so that's pretty cool too right no it is very cool and and every move they make every every thought that they make while they're in that airplane i mean what an aircraft number one to be flying in and then number two to be with the, that team that you're flying with making sure everyone is perfectly in sync and perfectly on their game yeah that joint training with the thunderbirds really reflects today's uh, operational environment in the department of defense uh, we operate increasingly in joint uh, environments uh, especially in theater um you know supporting combatant commanders around the world so pretty cool oh guess what they're firing it up i know i could see it uh, debbie's face just got really excited yeah she did they are firing up those engines so we should be shifting to the narrator for the air force thunderbirds soon we'll see if we get that sound but uh, that's a great show from the Air Force Thunderbirds, but they're getting ready to taxi out. Uh, and another unique thing about the Thunderbirds, Debbie, that I, I don't think a lot of people know is before a typical Air Force pilot, when they show up to go right. fly a sortie, they meet the crew chief on the ground, and the, the pilot themselves will do a walk around of the aircraft, checking things like structural integrity and, and different aspects uh, of the aircraft before they take off. But what's unique about the Thunderbirds is, is the pilots, when they come out, they just get right up on the ladder right. and jump in that jet. And that goes to the trust, knowing that these are the best crew chiefs in the world. Uh, and so it just really demonstrates that uh, uh, commitment to excellence that we've heard all day. You know, one of the Air Force's core values, there's three core values in the Air Force. Integrity first, um, excellence in all we do, uh, you know, and the, all those things matter. So just seeing that on full display here today uh, as the Air Force pilot gets into a plane where typically at most Air Force bases, they'll do a walk around with a plane. And not that they don't trust their crew chiefs, obviously, but it's right. just a tenant of the Thunderbirds. So the Thunderbirds perform precision aerial maneuvers demonstrating the capabilities of Air Force high-performance aircraft to people throughout the world and for us here today. The squadron exhibits the professional qualities the Air Force develops in the people who fly, maintain, and support these aircraft. Yeah, I mean, just incredible what they can do in the air. And, you know, the Thunderbirds, uh, uh, part of the Air Combat Command, but there's eight pilots and four support officers, so 12 officers in total, but over 130 enlisted personnel in 25 different career fields. I mean, just really an expansive operation. So what we will see over the next 30 minutes is a, de a demonstration, uh, a mix of formation flying and solo routines. The four aircraft diamond formation demonstrates the training and precision of Air Force pilots while the solo aircraft highlight the maximum capabilities of the F-16. Yeah. 
as you see some of that precision demonstration just by the ground crew. I mean, look at the pride in professionals oh, yeah. and how sharp those, even the ground movement is. And this just seems synonymous with patriotism, Independence Day, as we get ready to celebrate over the next couple of weeks. And what a way to kick things off here this afternoon. I don't know about you, Debbie, but I'm thinking back and I'm like, oh, maybe I should go back and be <laughs> a Thunderbird smile. You should do it. This seems pretty cool. Wow. This squadron will perform about 75 demonstrations each year. And more than 300 million people in all 50 states and 58 foreign countries have seen the red, white, and blue jets in more than 4,000 aerial demonstrations. Yeah, I mean, that's something we haven't talked about, but that, that distinctive Air Force Thunderbirds and even the way uh, their logos painted underneath the jet so when they fly overhead, I mean, it is very distinctive. Like, if you see a Thunderbird jet, you're like, oh, the yeah. Thunderbirds Yeah, right you here. definitely know. Yeah. The Thunderbirds were officially activated in 1953. The first aircraft was the straight-winged F-84G Thunderjet, a combat fighter bomber Korea. that was seen action in Korea. Yep. Yep. Yeah. They've actually changed planes a few times throughout their history, but they've been flying this F-16D model uh, for, for quite a little while now. Getting great close-ups there. You see the crew chief unchalking the wheels as they get ready to, to taxi out. But every move of, of this event is actually choreographed and scripted. They talked about it earlier. They got inspiration from Disney. Right. Uh, you know, always tweaking the show. So every time you come out to see the Thunderbirds, you, you haven't seen the new show. It's something different. Right, right. Which that's exciting. Yeah. Makes it unique. Uh, you know, whether you've seen the Thunderbirds, you know, five times or if this is your first time, it's going to be a great show. The Thunderbirds made their television history in 2003 while celebrating their 50th anniversary. The commander leader started the Coca-Cola 600 by broadcasting live from Thunderbird number one as he said, gentlemen, start your engines. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And the Thunderbirds, you see them all the time, right? They do Super Bowl flyovers. Uh, my commander, actually, in Air Education Training Command, my former commander, went out to... Daytona and the Daytona 500 uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, and, and supported that event with the Thunderbirds, and that was really awesome. That and, is. And, uh, you know, with that salute, they're about ready to taxi out, so uh, we are, again, moments away from seeing the Thunderbirds uh, fly across the skies here in Utah. And what an absolute privilege to have this right here in our state. Wow. 